As some of you already know, just last night Steph Curry dropped 57 points, 11 three balls, and got a small taste of the Bradley Beal lifestyle by catching an L along with it. Yeah, Twitter had a field day with this one. But that wasn't the only thing last night's game got me thinking about. I also found myself asking how a 32-year-old Steph has been playing his best basketball recently since the 15-16 season. You know, when he was in his prime at 27 years old? I've come up with a few solid arguments why Steph just came out of nowhere the way he did this year. So with all that out of the way, let's get going. So other than Steph dropping a career high earlier this season in 57 last night, he's averaging 29 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds a game on a Warriors team currently facing elimination if they don't get in gear at some point. And that's my first reason why Steph is playing like this. Man's back has to be hurting the way he's carrying this team. Who's his other real help? Draymond, Wiggins, Wiseman, who else? Maybe Oubre if he could make a damn three-pointer. If I'm Steph, I'm praying for some kind of miracle to get Clay back on the court tomorrow. That also indirectly adds to the reason for his great play. Or so you'd think. You'd think, okay, Clay's gone. There aren't many other real scorers on this team apart from Wiggins. His attempts have got to be up, right? Wrong. His total shots attempted are only 0.1 attempts per game, higher than 2015 to 2016. So it's not just extra attempts or minutes boosting his stats, he's legit just been balling the same way he was five years ago. Which is terrifying. Another good reason this could be happening is because his game doesn't really rely on his athleticism or his body's durability. Steph came into the league with ankle problems, he was consistently getting hurt and missing time from them. He built his game around those problems and since like 2014 they haven't been much of an issue for him. Basically, as long as Steph can shoot a basketball and move off the ball and with the ball the way he does now, he can be in the league as long as he wants. On top of that, KD is gone. Just another reason Steph takes a majority of the scoring load. And if you're one of the few asking why this isn't what we saw last season, maybe it has to do with the fact he played five games last season, just in case you forgot. But seriously, what Steph is doing right now is absurd. Apart from LeBron, who I'm convinced is just a mortal at this point, I don't think we've ever seen anything like this. I guess you could count MJ coming out of retirement twice and balling regardless, but even he had a readjustment period both times. Which is also why I find it unholy that most people aren't even considering Steph for MVP right now. He definitely wouldn't be MVP if the season were to end right now with things how they are. That'd probably be Jokic averaging a cool 27-12-9, and nine. but the fact that Steph isn't even top 10 is disgusting. I'm using the race tracker from Basketball Reference and they state the way the tracker works is quote, the NBA MVP award tracker ranks candidates based on a model built using previous voting results. This list does not represent the opinion of this site, rather, these are the players that the voters are likely to target, end quote. Because there is no way to really track the voting since it occurs at the end of the season. You can only make predictions. With that said, Basketball Reference stating that these are the players voters are most likely to target tells me narratives are likely accounted for. So tell me how Dame is at number 7 and Steph isn't even on the list. Look, I love Dame. If I wasn't a Celtics fan, I'd be a Blazers fan because of Lillard alone. But he has nearly identical averages to Curry, apart from assists, where he hasn't beat by one, with worse percentages. On top of that, before the season started, there was the narrative Curry's career was winding down, and after his injury last season, it was likely wraps for him. Curry is not giving haters the room to breathe this year. He's had a bad game here and there, but every time he did, he'd just drop a casual 40 the next game. Legit before their back-to-back -back against the Mavs, the Warriors took on the Celtics and Curry dropped 38. Then the first game against the Mavs, even though he had 28 points, he shot 4 for 10 from 3. And then he dropped the game I started this video with, with 11 made threes. More than he even attempted the game prior. Steph is a top 10 MVP candidate, it's not a debate. He's been hooping like his life depends on it. To say Steph is performing better than expected is an understatement. Realistically, I see him keeping this up for another two years max, probably retiring in five. But I wouldn't worry, Trey can hopefully take his place by then. Just has to tighten up the defense a bit more. Anyways, that's all besides the point. That's all for today's video. Tomorrow's video will probably be about D Rose since for those of you that didn't know, he just got traded back to the Knicks. But we'll talk about that more tomorrow. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.